Hey, how's it going? My name is James. And today on the channel, we're going to be reviewing Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in era two of Mistborn. Right off the rip, um, it's a good time. They're still continuing the trend of not being as good as the original trilogy. I think that The Well of Ascension is a better sequel than Shadows of Self is, but it's still a good book. It's still fun. I think that the best way that I could put it is maybe still kind of echoing what I said earlier. It still feels like a sequel TV series or like a spinoff series to some show that was really good a long time ago. And so really, I think that the main thing that kind of keeps me motivated through the book more than anything is looking for all of the nods to the previous trilogy, which might not be the, the best praise. But I mean, there's still other stuff to enjoy here a lot. I think Wax is kind of just like full on Mistborn Batman. Like he, he goes kind of full Batman in this book. Wayne is very entertaining. He provides a lot more of the comic relief. One area in particular, there's a really great character moment with him that I think kind of kind of solidifies him as like the heart of this series. That there's the goofy, funny side to Wayne, but then there's also the side of him that is kind of haunted by his past. And we got to explore a little bit more of that in this one. Marasi is better in this book. I liked her a lot in this book, being a full member of the the constables now. She's kind of progressed. I think that this book takes place a year after the last book. And so Wax is a full, I don't know what you want to call it, deputy of the constable of the police force, basically. And Marassi has kind of secured a position with one of the constable generals, I think is the guy's title, something like that. Steris is also a character that I feel like they got a little bit more page time in this book, but still kind of needs some more for me to really feel like connected to her. I definitely enjoyed her a lot more seeing her and Wax's relationship develop in this book, kind of going beyond just, I don't know if you want to call it an arranged marriage or a marriage out of necessity or a, a business relationship and kind of starting to see her make strides to grow closer to Wax, but also Wax kind of lowering his walls a little bit towards her as well. It was just good. The plot in this one was good, but I actually think that I kind of liked the the overall plot in the first one a little more. I think that Bleeder as a villain is interesting and was a cool concept, but I kind of saw the big twist at the end of the Sander Lanch and this one coming from a million miles away. I kind of saw what he was doing there with all of the revealing the Chandra and kind of getting them more involved in this book. This was probably one of the more predictable plot twists that I've read in a little while. And so I kind of, after the initial ramping action towards the end of the book, I kind of just teetered off towards the end and was kind of just trying to finish it, which is never a good feeling with a book. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it. It's, it's very fast paced. I do feel like that it may be dragged in the middle just a little bit. I also had the benefit of listening to most of it. I had a crazy work week this last week. I worked like almost 70 hours, I think. And so I had a lot of time to listen to, to the book. And so I listened to the vast majority of it and then I wrapped it up here this weekend reading physically. And I still think, like I said, I think that I enjoyed the first one a little bit more, but I am still excited to continue and see how this series wraps up. I liked the kind of just more world development that we got. We got to see a little bit more of what the Chandra have been up to since the previous series. I mean, I don't think it's much of a spoiler and you know what, maybe maybe we'll flash spoiler here and for just really quick, just so that I can mention that bringing Tensoon back is just really great in my opinion. Uh, I, I loved Tensoon in the first series. He was one of my favorite characters. And then getting to hear from Sazed, getting to hear from Harmony, you know, who Sazed, who is now basically God, was really cool. I mean, just getting the, I think, you know, just the little comma, I think, at the end of all of his little statements, just kind of was very nostalgic going back to the first Mistborn trilogy and, and was just a lot of the points in this book that I think that I was really engaged and hooked on were the points where it was kind of playing on those old feelings of the original trilogy and kind of nostalgic and, and in that way feels like a like a sequel series or a spin-off series where you're kind of just looking for the Easter eggs. And those Easter eggs are 
entertaining and they're fun to find. And, and, and the slower parts of the book were motivating because usually it's in those slower parts where Sanderson would drop a little lore or uh, some kind of revelation about just kind of how the religions have developed since the old times. It's interesting to hear about, you know, that Breeze and Spook and these characters from the old books kind of came and had essays and things that are now like religious texts or highly regarded philosophical writings and stuff like that. And I think that that is just kind of a fun thing for an author to get to do whenever they get to progress their world enough into the future where they're able to deify or turn the, the characters of their last series into legends. And that's fun for a reader too, to be able to find those little Easter eggs. But I just personally, so far with this series, I just don't feel like that it's stacking up to the first series. And honestly, I don't think that it will. Wax is a good character, but he's not Vin. I mean, he's just, he, to me, he's not Vin, he's not Ellen. He doesn't quite just capture the scrappy rootin' for him, you know, personality, which I think is interesting because I kind of sat and thought about it after I finished the book. And, and I know that this is intentional. I don't think it's like a like a world breaking revelation about this series, but I think that there is something motivating as a reader getting to read an underdog story, getting to read something like what happened with the with the final empire. I mean, getting to read a heist novel about these scrappy people who are kind of fighting against the government, fighting against this evil tyrant overlord. There's something motivating about wanting to see them succeed. There's something exceptionally painful about their losses. I mean, Sanderson even, like Wax even kind of uh, resonates on this in the book a few different times and Harmony even resonates on this a few different times in the book about how maybe things have been made too easy for humanity. He talks about how he had written out these discoveries and, and paved the way for them for to make all of this progress but things that have kind of stagnated because people weren't having to struggle and weren't having to work for it. And I know in the first book that I think that I kind of said I was scared about the story taking place out in the roughs and was happy to find that it took place kind of more in a city instead. And now I feel like I'm kind of going back on that because every time that they talk about how the, the roughs are where people go to struggle and that's where like Wax cut his teeth and that's where he has kind of built his legend. In some ways, I feel like that maybe reading about Wax building his renown out in the roughs might have been a more interesting story than, than what we've been given with this second book. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I think that the plot had a lot of good beats. Like I said, I think that Bleeder and having a, like a Chandra villain is cool in concept. I think it's a cool idea. And then, you know, the twist at the end, kind of the ramifications of that definitely have me curious to see what state Wax is in at the beginning of the next book. But the plot overall did not really progress in the way that I would have hoped it to. It almost felt like, and this is so weird to me, but it, it almost felt like a side story to the main plot. Because in my mind, the second book I was thinking would have a lot more to do with his uncle, Mr. Suit, and the crime syndicate that he kind of runs which I feel like, you know, we're building towards that. Sanderson loves his major villain subplots in his books where he gets to really build them up into something spectacular. And so if that's the direction that the series goes where we're working towards him, then, then cool. But I was kind of hoping for that to be a little bit more of the focus in this book. And I kind of feel like that, that this second book, at least for me so far, was just kind of a, a distraction away from that. And I was a little more interested in what Mr. Suit was doing in the first book than I was in Bleeder's motivations in this one. So not an amazing book, uh, but not a terrible book. I mean, like I said, if, if I really feel like a book is, is bad, and I don't know that I could actually even do this with a Sanderson book, I don't know that it's possible for me to DNF something that he's written, but I usually don't waste my time finishing something if I'm not, if I'm not vibing with it because I don't have as much time to read as a lot of people do. And so whenever I do read, if it's not gelling with me, I'll put it down because I wanna focus on something that, that I am going to enjoy. So most of the time, if I finish a book, it's because I'm, you know, I liked it enough to finish it. And I think that that's probably, as harsh as that sounds, that's probably the best I can say for this, is I, I liked it enough to finish it, but it doesn't exactly have me like chomping at the bit for the next one. That being said, I will be reading the next one, The Bands of Mourning, next month, obviously leading all the way up into November to the release of The Lost Metal. And I'm still excited for that. It's still exciting to be reading a series that is 
coming out and getting to read the books in order leading up to them, I think has just, like I've said in previous videos, has been my favorite way to read. It's like back in the day whenever Marvel movies were good and I enjoyed them <laughs> watching all the Marvel movies before the next one comes out. Uh, it's just fun. It's just a fun way to hype yourself up for the for the next book. And so hopefully with The Lost Metal, I think being the last book in this series, hopefully it'll be a great one. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how Sanderson wraps it all up. So yeah, I don't think that I have much more that I can say about this one. If you're if you're new to the channel and you want to go back and see what I thought of the first book, The Alloy of Law, I'll throw that up here somewhere. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment, uh, click the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And let me know down below if you have read Shadows of Self. And if you feel like that maybe what I thought is a little too harsh or maybe I'm right on the money, or should I be more excited about the next books? I don't, I don't know. I'm a little lukewarm on this one, but I have faith in Sanderson. I've, I've loved pretty much everything else that he's written. And so not that anybody is perfect or above a flop here or there, but I am not exactly just dying to get to the next one. That was kind of just a rambly way to end all this. I'm not sure where to go, so I'm just gonna end it. Pippin, any thoughts? Nope, he's got nothing. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you in the next one.